So this experience um, is a follow-up with the um, alien race. So, or not the alien race, but the uh, cyborgs or robots or whatever. These beings that are like on Mars or this other planet. Um, essentially, they were just bringing me in to meet all of them. But it kind of was like I was approaching the colony. Now, I didn't go to where they were staying at, like uh, necessarily their home base or anything like that. But it was like a bunch of them were on the surface. And they all, of course, looked the same. Whoever made them or created them, you know, or uh, kind of made their bodies, you know, kind of designed them all the same. But essentially, that was it. Uh, we were just meeting. And I could see Rebazar kind of was there. He was kind of funny he was like floating in the sky watching and i'm not sure if they could see him but i could see him and he was just watching this meeting go down and i was meeting them with a bunch of the new friends but that's my little experience to share yeah again it's always a step at a time just like here no different uh you know we we've kind of been grown up to think that okay these are aliens they're intelligent they're here to help us and all this stuff well that's all. Those are cute stories, aren't they? So they're just like us. And, you know, you look at Independence Day as an example, the movie. They have uniforms. So I would say, yeah, they all look alike. But then themselves, they're individuals themselves. They're just wearing their outer coating or whatever to protect themselves. Because they had a lot of nuclear wars and stuff, uh, bad wars on the surface. So they had to go underground. And that's the whole idea here with all the underground tunneling is to eventually destroy the service and everybody go underground. Uh, yeah, so it's a step at a time. I know I do these things too and meet certain people uh, or other body types and it's a step at a time. And just introducing you so you get the experience. And so as we do the experience, whatever it is, uh, the boys come in and back that is what they do, you see. So that gives us the experience, just like a father and a child. The father gives, uh, allows the, the child to have certain experiences, but he's there to help them out, to back them. Instead of the, the dad just doing everything, you know, like on a farm, uh, teaches the child at a very young age how to do farming and stuff like that. And he's there to back them and help them. It's all the same thing, you see. So as I was presented with this challenge, uh, you know, the whole idea is, is that as I did something, uh, they would back me and make suggestions just like they do to you. So that's it. It's a step at a time. So I don't assume anything uh, in regards to people making decisions, uh, et cetera, because that's a moment by moment thing. And uh, whether they're going to help us or not, uh, the idea is, is that uh, we are already proving what we're doing. And that's what I refer to, not asking them, are you going to help us? Uh, sometimes that's the idea, but really, uh, it's like, do you see what we're doing? Okay, uh, are you aware of that, uh, etc.? And that we're making sense of real survival and helping others because there's enough uh, in this realm and in creation for everybody. So is there really a need to uh, do all this funny stuff, uh, you see? So that's what I refer to. And let them make the decision from there. So if they want to keep being uh, naughty and doing silly things, well, they create their own um, karmic situations, don't they? Cause and effect karmic situations. And uh, realistically, the, these uh, body types, these aliens, whatever, doesn't matter. They're just like us. They just got different bodies. Um, they don't know what creation is all about. They really don't know. They're just struggling in creation. They have no idea. They have no idea what they're doing here. So those are the references that I use. Um, and even uh, with the authorities here, whatever, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, they got a job. They make money. They drive a car, whatever. doesn't mean they know what they're doing. See, we've been so literalized. Again, keep looking at the literal aspect of how we've been robotized to think in a certain way. Oh, he's got a good job and he's popular and he makes a lot of money. And, oh, he's got a lovely house. So what? 
you know, it, because life is awareness. It's not about that at all. So you look at what makes sense. You look at what gets their attention that makes sense. You know saying? And so um, that's what I do. And I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying that there's another way to look at it to where it kind of leverages them in a certain way to where all of a sudden uh, they may decide something different because they're already set in their ways. You have to. You have to see and figure that they're already set in their ways. And that's true. They've been doing it thousands, millions of years. And it's tradition with them to destroy. They don't know anything else. And so uh, whether they help us or not, the boys, you know, are not concerned, but we are giving them the opportunity. That's the whole idea. We're providing an opportunity. We're not begging them. No, we're not interested because if they want to self-destruct, that's their business. Uh, not ours. We're looking for people to step up. And as more and more do, then all of a sudden, all the ones that are afraid will follow suit eventually, or they won't. It's whatever. So that's how real it gets. But yeah, a step at a time. And just like um, anything, or started, uh, you know, my experience with the Rod of Power, my experience with all of this, it's, it's a lot of years. It's not going to happen overnight. So I don't even consider that, oh, okay, next week they're going to do it, they're going to be our friends. Well, we'll see. Yeah, so again, uh, always the challenge of being ready uh, to provide a um, this real opportunity for them, because that's it. We're, we're very specialized with, with what we're providing and, and who else is doing it. And again, they see what we're doing. They really do. Now, for the most part, just like the people on the earth and the people that we know, they see what we're doing, but they twist it around in their mind. Just like when Val walked into the restroom uh, a month ago or so and, and met this gal, Katya, that, she, that we had known, and uh, she started spewing out, oh, uh, I don't want nothing to do with your cult or whatever. See, again, they twist it around, they, and they see what we're doing. But they'll still twist it around because they're afraid or they want they want to they're thinking that oh i'm not going to give up my free will to something that i don't know about you know that doesn't make sense to me because again everybody has their routines so you have to objectively see this too how they have their routines and set and then you have to deal with that even when they do step up that's the challenge you know, it's just like a person joining the military, you know, the sergeant and the military officers. Now they have a challenge with this person. Oh, yeah, he joined. They recruited him. He joined, whatever. Now they got a challenge with him. They don't know what he's going to do. You see, you never know what they're going to do. They come and go and they do whatever, or they can be infiltrators or whatever. And that's fine, too. All of that's fine. And Paul, again, Paul Zekenkar is a, is a very good example of that, the infiltration of things. And so, well, but that's cool, Jeremy. Yeah, on and on. So it will continue.